Welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Once again, I'm Tyler Peters. And I'm Maddie Adams. We're now going to turn our attention to men's lacrosse. Marquette opened conference play in our nation's capital back on March 23rd. The team used an 8-0 run through the second and third quarters to capture the 9-8 victory against number 14 ranked Georgetown Hoyas. Redshirt senior Tanner Thompson led Marquette with his third straight hat trick. Sophomore goaltender John Holzman was solid between the pipes and posted a season-best 12 saves. A week later, the Golden Eagles traveled to Villanova to face the Wildcats. Nova's Corey McManus scored seven goals as Marquette moved to 1-1 one one in conference play, falling 15-11 in the Keystone State. Andrew Romagnoli notched a hat trick and assist on the afternoon, while John Wagner, Connor McLelland, Holden Patterson, and Luke Anderson each scored twice. Marquette led 3-2 on John Wagner's first goal before allowing a 5-0 Nova run. Marquette trailed by as many as six goals, but were able to pull back within one, 10-9 with five minutes left in the third quarter. But it wouldn't be enough. Marquette returns home to Valley Field Saturday to host St. John's on Senior Day. We now want to welcome in one of our men's lacrosse analysts, Dan Avington. Dan, always great to see you here in Studio 6. Tyler, it is great to be back on the show. All right, let's get started. Marquette's win over Georgetown on March 23rd was a big one. How were they able to come out with a win over the Hoyas to start conference play? They just had everything clicking in that game. Their offense was able to go on a big run. The defense was able to hold things down. Holzman was solid between the pipes. Everything was going right for Marquette in that game. And I don't think it was just one specific asset of the field. They just had everything going for them. The Golden Eagles then suffered a tough loss to Nova this past Saturday. Dan, what did you notice that contributed to that loss? Well, it was a tough game because Villanova's attack is really, really solid. And they have a couple guys that can beat you in multiple ways. So they shut down a couple different guys, but Corey McManus then exposed them on the offensive end. So I thought they played pretty well. Villanova's a team that's been pretty good this season. They beat the number one team in the country in Yale earlier on in the year. And they're a pretty lethal team on the offensive and defensive end. So I thought that they picked up their production, but just weren't. it wasn't going to be a win for most of it. Indeed, and as we saw in the highlights a few moments ago, the offense has really picked up their production recently. What has been the key there? What have, what have you been seeing with that offense that has really clicked for them? I think it's been that they've set an official lineup. They have three guys on attack and three guys on midfield that constantly come in. And throughout the first part of the season, it was kind of mix and match. And Romanoli was in the midfield. Tanner Thompson was attack, and that didn't work. So now Romo is an attackman. And Tanner Thompson is able to facilitate out of the midfield, and that's worked perfectly. So they've been able to spread the ball around. Different guys have been able to score, and guys like Peter Henkhouse have made a huge impact. A guy who didn't have a huge year last season, but this year he's really stepped up, and he's been really shifty, and he gives the team an asset that they haven't had in the past. Interesting. And then the defense has struggled a bit as of late. What can they improve on? What adjustments can they make within their program to get better? Well, I think it's just they haven't played up to their potential. They've run into a couple teams that have just been incredible on the offensive end. I mean, Georgetown had Bucaro and they had Jake Carraway, two of the best players in the nation. And then Villanova had, as I mentioned earlier, a ton of guys that can produce offensively. So I don't think the defense has played badly per se, but I think there's more potential there. It's a veteran group in Jackson Ellert, Brendan Connolly, and Nick Grill, and they should be able to play better as a unit. They played together last year. So I think it's just a matter of honing their game a little bit more, getting a bit better chemistry, and some of that falls on the D-middies as well. John Holzman has been steady between the pipes for them these past few games. How much of an asset has the transfer been for this team? He's been huge. He's an athletic guy, and he's been able to save the shots down low and up high. So there's been a couple times where other teams are right on the doorstep, right in front of the crease, and Holzman has made huge saves. And that is absolutely humongous when you have a goalie because a lot of times teams are going to make those shots every single time. But Holzman hasn't been allowing those, and he's been stopping the ones that have come from the inside and the shots that are farther out on the outside. He's been, he's been stopping those big rips that a lot of goalies will allow. You know what they say, got to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who would you say has been the star of this team throughout the past few games, Dan? I would, I, I think an unconventional pick would be Luke Anderson. He's a small stick defensive midi, and he's made a huge impact in transition and on the defensive side of things. And I think mainly he's been important because he's had a couple gigantic goals. Like early on in games, he scored the first goal against Villanova. And he's also made a huge impact, a couple of ground balls. He's caused some turnovers on the defensive end. So he's holding things down on both sides of the field. I think I will mention Andrew Romanoli. He came in as a grad transfer and 
made an immediate impact on the offense. He's had some gorgeous finishes in the past couple games, and I don't think the offense is where they are without him. Wow, very interesting. St. John's is up next on Saturday. What will be key for them in that matchup in order to come away with the win? I think it's just play team lacrosse. The entire team has to be clicking. It probably starts out at the face-off X if you're Marquette. Either Hirschman, Devine, or Washington needs to be winning a lot of face-offs, winning a lot of possessions, because St. John's is another team that has weapons all around on the offensive side of things, and their defense is stout, too. So they're a team that doesn't really struggle in many assets of the game. So Marquette needs to step up their production both on offense, defense, and their middies need to be able to get them in transition. I think Holzman is going to be huge in this game because St. John's has a lot of players that shoot a ton. So he's going to need to come up with double-digit saves at least. And I think the offense really needs to get off as many shots as they possibly can because St. John's is a freshman goalie. So if you're able to pepper him with shots, then that means he's not going to stop as many. Just got to take it one play at a time. Finally, Dan, I need a prediction from you. Will Marquette end up in the Big East tournament? And if so, what seed will they be? I think they're going to end up in the Big East tournament. I, I think they're going to be a three seed. I think they, they beat St. John's, they beat Providence, and they're going to lose to Denver here on out. So just tiebreakers wise, they should be able to get into the third spot, maybe fourth, depending on how Georgetown and Villanova do the rest of the season. But Denver should be number one. It should probably be Villanova two, Marquette three, Georgetown four, and then St. John's and Providence are out of the tournament. But I think this Marquette team has the potential to make a deep run. This is one of the best Marquette rosters that we've seen in a while, led by Wagner on the offensive end. And he has so many different weapons around him, a veteran defensive group. It's, it's really the specialty positions that Marquette has struggled so far at the face-off X. And in goal, we haven't seen as steady a presence. And it looks like Holzman is starting to emerge as that presence in between the pipes, but they need somebody at the face-off dot. It's, not some, it's been a three-headed monster, but none of them have really been all that solid the entire season. Yeah, and that's interesting. I was going to ask you, you know, like what's the one thing for this team that will really be the thing that they're going to have to overcome down the stretch, but you kind of touched on it. Is there anything else that you see out of this team that might affect them uh, trying to make a tournament bid? I think their defense really needs to step up because Marquette has been, their identity the past couple of years has been as a defensive team, and this year the defense has struggled. And that's probably because a lot of the teams that they've taken they've taken on have been really strong offensive teams. They have a lot of weapons, but the Marquette defense, uh, Ellert, Connolly, and Grill, they're really good close defenders, but they haven't made the big plays yet this season. And the D-Middies, they've done a nice job off ball, but they have to, they've got to be a bit more aggressive. They've got to cause more turnovers. They can't have the ball come inside right to the doorstep and have easy goals. That just can't happen. And I know Coach Ample has been on them about that. I was talking to him, and he said, this team has not lived up to their potential yet on the defensive side. The offense has really picked it up, but defense still needs to step up. And in order to win those clutch games, in order to get that next level, you got to have your best players be your best players, as you mentioned. Oh, yeah. So as always, great insights, Dan. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere, because when we come back, Jack Phillips will be giving his final take on the disappointing end to the men's basketball season. 